Hello there, welcome back to episode 8 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 63. So today we are going to reach to a new level of service by burying the dead in a handsome fancy crypt. So crypts are really really something else, you know? The moment you be, you're able to build your first one, your, your citizenship will really be a lot higher. The problem about these is they require a gemstone, and everything that requires gemstone is truly a pain to build and to maintain. So, but that being said, we have the technology points available, so let's uh, pick them up. And in the meantime, I want to go over one or two things that have happened between this and the last episode. For one, I have spiced up the city with trees. So the Cretonians love harmony. So you can find them in the decorations menu over here. In the past versions, this was something you had to research. You find them now here and they don't require any research anymore. I like that. So the thing is, flower beds, they emit harmony as well, but obviously it doesn't create any fulfillment for anybody. The trees do. Another thing that I have noticed about the Cretonians is that they hate dread. I actually always dirt over that, simply because, you know, they have a meter here, and basically every species that has a meter here likes dread. So either they have no meter, then they don't care about it, or they have a meter and they like it, or so I thought, but no, you can also have a meter here and dislike it. That's the Cretonians, they hate dread. So in the last episode I built up the scaffolds here and they emit dread. So we are going to delete this thing, and with that we are going to actually create happiness. Huh. What a concept, eh? So, I just uh, meant to point that out here, just as something interesting about the uh, species here. The environment menu is a really, really good point to look for improvement, you know? There's a lot of things we could here set up uh, as well. Lighting, there's a lot of potential here in terms of lighting. We got metal pro uh, production now, and we could now research torches, you see here. The lighting tech is really, really low cost, only 300 tech points, and would allow us to give, get new items to decorate our city with. Um, I just want to round out here that these come also in different sizes, and therefore, I uh, by spreading them all over the town a bit, I, I really increased the meter for harmony in the city, and thus made the city again more attractive and attracted more people. The uh, deletion of the uh, scaffold thing here, I I left as a special moment because I I was I was learning myself something while I did this. Isn't this great? So with that being said, we got a, another thing in front of us. We now have to build a first crypt. So crypts are really, really costly, but they are so much worth it, like I said. So I personally like to build them rather small because this is a high cost project. So I rather build more of these rather than one large one. You see, here I invert my usual uh, my usual rules. I I try to keep it small because this way I can just uh, slap out a couple more of them if the need arises, although I think this is a little bit too small. Let's be a little bit more daring here. Eight on eight is, uh, we don't need to get that small. We're going to go for a, uh, uh, here, the corner is too narrow. Here, let's go there. So, nice and fancy 12 on 12. There we go. So, just wanted to have it large enough to have to maintain at least one employee, I thought. So, but, uh, well, wishful thinking, eh? Weirdest crypt ever, but we have exactly enough for one employee, let's hope. We're going to, oh, well, never mind, uh. That was a pointless endeavor. 
let's rather plaster this place with statues. So you can already see even a small crypt is darn costly. You see, the costs of uh, in terms of gemstone are already quite high, and that's uh, not even much um, effort here put into that. I still built these with wood, but only because we're a Kratonian city. Otherwise, I would now opt into uh, cut stone, even as a possibility to make it even more grand. But by now, we are mostly talking about concepts here. It's most important that you understand how these tools work, so you can make it, uh, make them into your, put them into your own system. Okay, I allocated one chest for a gemstone, so I can. Keep an eye on it and now we're going to order it and weep so uh one unit of gemstone is 1000 denarii so we're uh now slapping out like almost our entire wallet i am ordering more of this stuff than i actually need for the sake of maintenance again and uh luckily our little city here has a small deposit of gemstone here actually which we're going to um grab ourselves in the course of the next episodes but the problem with gemstone is you have to take out the the gem mine first so that's why i didn't do it yet we have to research first so we're almost there oh yeah i got the metal now boom let there be better science this will get us a a huge abundance of extra um, science points that we desperately need at this point. So the crypt construction phase is quite in important. Uh, or no, it is important that you respect the fact that you will require more than one crypt once some time has passed. Because you know, there is one thing that shall never ever happen in your city and that is no crypts open if there are no crypts open and somebody die and and and, and there and somebody might get the feeling that they might fall dead of their uh, dead out of their bed in the next morning without a spot in the crypts open they will go nuts that's because the moment that you have here this um the moment there is no open burial spot in the crypt, the satisfaction from this service will dwindle rapidly. It's the same for the graveyards. As soon as there are enough, not enough graveyard spots anymore available, people will go nuts. That's really, really important to know. So here, well, it does take a moment until our cut stone production catches up with that. But I am happy to say that we at least have 10 masons by now working there. And also our quarry is employing 20 people permanently. Also our uh, cotton and uh, fabric production is also running. I have managed to get past the problems of the last episode successfully. So here, well, I'm really happy that I didn't have to buy the cut stone myself. You could, of course, buy as w both materials from the outside and just provide them with a heavy influx of denarii. You can play this game in so many different ways that it is really hard to say you should do this or you should do that. So here we have now 16 available burial spots. Knowing me and knowing how many deaths we had <laughs> in the last couple of episodes because people froze to death, I, I don't feel comfy with this situation. So we're going to amp that up over the course of the time. But technically, as long as this meter is full, you don't need more. You won't gain more citizens satisfaction if you'd be slapping out more now that won't do anything okay so uh here at this point we're actually not getting the huge 
immigration boost that I expected, uh, honestly. But that's probably because we are already host hosting here quite a lot of people. And a lot of factors are currently not as good as they were before. Our wallet is emptier than before. Our food stockpiles don't look that well. It's always uh, that time right before the harvest or people are the unhappiest. I already... <laughs> I already grew accustomed to that, and, uh, you know, if your economy is subsisting heavily on, 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 on farming, it's always like that. You always have that cycle. Alright, but that being said, we have now also access to some extra technology points. I'm going to invest these into better farming technologies one more time, and, uh, well, where do I... <laughs> Let's see. Is that even good? So I'm trying to figure out what's where I'll get the best re, uh, rewards here. So husbandry method. So let's see how much meat do we actually earn. In situations like these, it really pays off to check out what, uh, what you actually would get out of that. So here, improving of these technologies is, in my opinion, rather secondary. We don't get that much meat out of it per year. 270 units are really not that much, so it's not really worth the tech. I think uh, when we check out what the farms churn out per year, so this one 1,300, and this one 1,500, so I know where my science points are spent better. So the this technology would boost all crops. I would gain more grain and more cotton, uh, or uh, that's that. Or well, uh, this this uh, one situation though, I'm going to go for the um, deeper optimizations here for 500 each. So you can juice up every of your um, oh white shimmer again, every one of your industries like that, of course. There are, uh, you can sink a lot of uh, XP in there, or, or research points. So here, hybrid optimization is also worth mentioning, where you can first invest some into cotton farming and then get some results for all of the other grades for lower investment. So there is some space for us, uh, some, some, some more um, room above us to grow. So, the next bigger step is always to check on out what kind of fulfillment do I not offer yet, and where would we profit if I'd be offering more of that. So here, it's uh, totally noticeable that we don't have enough access to canteens, or City's happiness would strongly, strongly improvable. 50 person is a meter where I say go for it. Here, stages and new spots. There's also really um, not enough uh, in the proximity there, but with the stages, it's quality again. So people want better stages, not, more, not necessarily more stages. So lavatories, well, we already improved a bit on that. So let's fetch ourselves to new workers. And let's ponder about our new uh, about about our, our next steps. So there's now several ways where you can in which you can evolve your your city from now on. It pays off, in my opinion, to have more than one crypt out of given reasons. But uh, there is not that much more to explain behind that concept. You know, that's uh, that's that. What's now interesting and really, really important is that we need to soup up our technology production ever further. Because, you see, technology points do make us more efficient, but they also unlock new areas. So, I am going to unlock now a completely, a complete other new thing. Where is it found? Where's medicine at? Arg. I'm playing this game since a while, but uh, ah, here. So, uh, no healthcare is not a spot where we are going to invest more. So, we could now invest into a hospital I, or for, I, I wanted for a moment, 
but uh, this would only help us in the outbreaks of the White Shimmer. Not necessarily anything uh, that would provide us more workers, so we're not going to go for that. It's really important to know that pretty much every prospect of progress can be uh, found in this menu. This is basically one of the most important menus of the entire game, in my personal opinion. So we are going to work next, I'd say, on taverns, because I think this is uh, one of the parts where we can get a lot of improvement. And another thing is stone roads. I have now access to a quarry, therefore stone roads are not that much of a big deal anymore. This will also increase the quality rating of the roads and make the people a lot happier. Also, what we could do, what I failed to do with the Kratonians, because this... Uh, I didn't want to bloat this too hard into the tutorial series, but here the roundness of this place is not high enough. That means I have too many square buildings. The entire building style of the city is not what Kratonians really like. I would need to make more rooms looking like this one. Funnily enough, for the sake of the understanding, this is a rounder room than this one. This is pretty round already. This is also roundish. This is uh, a little bit round. This is of course not round at all. So, um, you know, you, you, you should not take the wrong impression that you need to build actually round. The more nooks and crannies and uh, bulges it has, the more it satisfies this weird roundness need. Okay, so taverns it is. Taverns do require a lot of pre-work, you know? So we're probably not going to get it done in one episode today. But, uh, you know, taverns are the next big civic step that we take. So, unlike canteens and taverns, is not, you will not find any food, you will find drink there. And currently we're not even producing any drinks. So let's see, do we need to, do we need to research brewing these days? Yes, brewery is a uh, researchable tech. Okay, so luckily grain is the ingredient for drinks as well as bread, so we don't need to set up a new industry um, grain-wise, but we will need a new processing facility. So, the brewery is now requiring pottery to run. Now we are at a point where we would need to constantly, constantly import that stuff. Or we just produce it ourselves. It's up to you. On this map, funnily enough, we could actually, we could actually brew, um, create pottery ourselves, because I have a pretty decent clay um, deposit there. So I am actually for the first time considering it. Okay, so relatively large building yet again, you know, the usual applies. We are going to go for a nice large workshop here. Does that work? Nah. Okay. So here, same, same rules as usual. Try to cram in as many employees as possible to avoid further future expansions of the site or keep it low if you don't have an, a heavy amount of resource to invest into the building. It's, uh, it's always depending on the current situation. If you need the building really desperately, it pays off to make it smaller and uh, just put in the upgraded later. But, well, I never had the moment where I felt like, man, I wish I would have rushed my brewery earlier. Nah. Most of the time, I had the impression that this game rewards the patience to say, well, I'm going to wait until I have all the resources together that I need for this brewery. And until then, nice blueprint there. So uh, that's been my personal impression so far. Correct me where I stand wrong, please, because the complexity level of this game is is quite high. So uh, yeah, we're uh, ah, finally on a 100 percent. Okay, here we go. So this place now will require a quite absurd amount of pottery. Luckily, pottery is not that much of a big deal anymore for us because we can import it quite easily. 
but I don't want to have yet another thing that I need to take care of every time. It's bad enough that I have to take care of a wood cutting here every time again myself. I mean, I could set up more uh, woodcutters uh, camps like these here. In all, in all fairness, I do this to myself a bit. But yeah, you get the idea. What I was actually uh, leading towards to is that we are going to go importing now. So the import depot is a place that automatically orders stuff for you. And this is what we're going to utilize at this point. Because really, I don't have the power and the, the, the patience anymore to do this all by myself. Alright, in the meantime, I think we need to order a heavy amount of pottery to set up the store up front. I could now, of course, set up clay pit and set up a uh, workshop that makes the pottery for us. But as you see here, 500 units of pottery only did cost me 11,000 denarii. This is relatively co low cost, you know. This is not as if you would be paying absurd amounts for the pottery. Usually there is. Usually there is. The interesting part about this game is I really have to um, point out that... Er, wait a second. Can we hear... Can I upgrade it? Ah, yeah, convert it. Um, the interesting point is that the economy of this game is uh, like... Uh, sorry. The economy of this game is always basing on what is happening around you. So, uh... Ah, I don't have the technology, so I can't click all day. Um, that means if the provinces around you are not providing stone, stone is going to be costly. They provide a lot of wood, wood is not going to be costly, and so on and so forth. The game does not, uh, simulate these prices out of nothing. They are the result of the happenings around you on the world map here, just so you know. Or at least I understood things so far. So prices were always different wherever I played, so I figured it's been about my, uh, it's been also about my neighbors, but I actually don't have any real proof about them, if you value such things. Alrighty. So my tech points are almost used up. And therefore, we're going to have to check out what does the uh, paved roads tech cost. Not too much. I strongly uh, suggest you to not go too close to zero with your points. Tech points, I mean. This is already very, very... Um, I'm feeling not well about this, alright? I am not happy in having my tech points that low, that close to zero, but I figured... It's going to be okay, since we're now currently upgrading our systems, and as soon as these majestic new roads of stone have been uh, paved on the entire city, we're, uh, we're going to see enough happiness to get more researches. But the, the research decay system of this game is ruthless, so the moment you don't have uh, enough researches anymore on the topic, the uh, technology points decay, and the game will block the technologies that you got. So you will lose technology, as a matter of fact. Because I'm so afraid of that, I am instantaneously getting myself more researchers here. So, yeah, upgrading roads is not a fun task, alright? I really wish we could have a, uh, a simpler tool. But, I mean, one of the good things is you can upgrade a lot of road at once. At least that's one thing, you know. Or, oh, wait a second. Oh, beautiful. This tool does only react to roads. I got what I wanted to be uh, on my fingertips. Alrighty. So, uh, I, I'm sorry I got lost in this uh, wonderful um, road paving menu. So, the import station. We are going to tell our industry now to keep our um, warehouses 
import to maintain warehouse stock at 25% of total capacity. And that's what we're going to keep it here, uh, stay, uh, what we're going to do here. Basically, the, this, oh, whoopsie. This import station makes sure that whenever pottery drops below a certain threshold, we're going to, we're going to order new. And that's really, really important because um, the drink industry won't work without pottery. It has pottery as a constant, constantly needed ingredient because, you know, the drinks are put into pottery. And obviously the pottery is a single time use thing in this game where they, they eat it after they have uh, enjoyed their drink. I don't know. Cretonian things. Don't. I don't ask any further questions. So I imported another batch of uh, furniture. The uh, This is a recurring necessary evil. In all of my cities, I had this problem that, you know, ultimately, I had always to import furniture because uh, whatever I do, I never get enough carpenters together to satisfy the needs of my ever-growing city. But I think it is okay like that for me personally. If it is not okay for you, just uh, just build your city accordingly. You have now the tools at your hand. Okay, so that being said, we got now all we need. It's just the brewery is not uh, running yet. Reaching episodes end already, dang. So environment here, you see, it's going up. Uh, it's going up now. Here again, there is a maximum threshold for for the of, of impact for this uh, little method here. So after a while, you'll have to build fancy roads for your subjects to grow happier again. It's the same uh, procedure that we had the whole time before. Okay, so the brewery is almost done. And now we are uh, producing drinks. So drinks though, oh, here all the crates are already allocated. Oh, whoopsie. Jeez, when, we, when did we use that entire warehouse already? Darn it. <laughs> yeah, so the drinks will be stored on over here. And then we're just going to spread these via taverns. Drinks are also something you want to produce as much as possible. You will need these a lot in the future. You can make drinks out of uh, fruit. Wait a sec. Yeah, out of fruit. Or out of grain. I didn't know that, Jer, that uh, fruit recipe had a better uh, efficiency there, but, you know, the little things. We're now not going to put this on auto-employ. It's also worth mentioning that your drink production is also putting a strain on your coal. So there's a lot of things that this is uh, costy in. And now we can get ourselves a tavern. The tavern is now basically the last of the big um, service buildings that spread, that have a huge impact on your, uh, on your, on your town. Or I should rather say, it's the last of the easily achievable ones. Now we're going to go for the harder achievable ones. Namely, in the next couple of episodes, I want to set up a court. Because I figured that this would be a really good thing for especially a Kratonian city. And I also want to work myself now slowly, slowly towards um, temples. Because temples are so powerful. <laughs> so, so powerful. Okay, so a tavern has the huge benefit that it's uh, eligible for carpets. So, if you place down carpets, though, it needs uh, textiles. If you don't place down carpets, it doesn't need textiles. So, just so you know. I'll, I love carpets, though. Because as you as you might notice, they are uh, they are fitting into every little small niche 
Unlike other items, they don't block movement, and therefore, I love these. I really, really do. So, uh, ah yeah, I forgot the doors. And that's that. This building will then constantly consume drinks to be to be working, to be functional, however you want to call it. Oh yeah, and here you see a wonderful example of how the game constructs roads autonomously. If you don't build roads, the game shows you where your people want roads. I love this. It's one of my favorite things about this game. Ah oh, well, among many. So the tavern won't be uh, done for today, but I'd say, well, that's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. The brewery now is in action, and as you see here, we're producing drinks 94 this year. It's not that much. It's mostly because we have only begun with the production, but we're going to continue next episode. This series is mostly about showing the ropes and not about making things super efficient right from the get-go. So this will take a while. I personally would always recommend with all these steps, if you ever notice that things are, how to put it, not going as you see them here in the video, just take your time and take it slowly and uh, you'll see, you'll be getting there. Alrighty, so thanks for watching you all. And, oh, low temperature? We got wood. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below. Leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'd be delighted if you did so. And of course, check out the playlist link down there below. It leads you to the entirety of this series. And that's been that. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.